Today we're going on an art nature adventure. We're going on a field trip and our artist that we're inspired by today is Andy Goldsworthy. He's a British sculptor and he is an environmentalist. He creates some really beautiful art from nature. He takes photographs of it to document his beautiful creations. And today we're going to get started on ours. Okay, so our nature art adventure starts now, but we need to know some rules and some procedures to help us be the best artist we can be. First of all, we want to be safe. Make sure you have an adult that supervises you on this adventure. Our artist inspiration is Andy Goldsworthy, a British sculptor and environmentalist who has inspired us to create our own today. The supplies that we need for our adventure are very simple. We need a collection bag and we need a camera. The items that we need to collect on our adventure are these types of objects. We want interesting textures. A texture, texture means how something feels or how it looks like it might feel. It might feel prickly, which is my little boy's favorite objects to look for. It might look like it's smooth, rough, hard, or soft. These are all texture words and textures that you're gonna look for. Variety of shapes, that means different kinds of shapes. You could have some that have angles and points or you might have some that have smooth um, edges. You want a variety of colors. Some might be bright, some might be dull, primary or secondary colors. Look for a variety. Not everything has to be green that you're looking for. You want a variety of sizes. You might find some small objects and then some bigger ones and maybe some medium ones in between. Let's go. Luke found something. Here, put it in my bag. Oh, let me see it. Show it to me. Can we paint this? Very cool. We might. We'll see. Thank you. I love the colors of that. That is beautiful. Look at this lizard. I have interrupted his beautiful house. This texture is, wait, what's the texture? Texture is how it feels when you touch it or how you how it feels when you look at it. Like, what, what do you think it might feel like? It feels like, it, so it's, I don't know the texture. So it feels like a little bit spiky. Spiky texture on the branch part and then the needles feel how? Look at this. A baby pine comes in there. Tell me about the colors that you see. So the color is green, dark green, <laughs> and brown. I have now found Mama. some leaves that are very vintage. And I've also found <laughs> this one-of-a-kind pine cone. It's perfect. It's not one of, it's not deformed at all. And Last but not least, I found a purple flower. Ooh. Mine's, mine's tiny. It kind of made a bouquet, sort of. Uh huh. And I have some dried little green leaves. Mm -hmm. Um. You eat poison just, ivy? No, <laughs> not poison ivy. Some brown leaves, and then um, pieces from a pine tree. When you get back to your yard, you want to install your objects to your yard. You're creating an art installation. The type of art that you're making today is an installation. You're going to take an area of your yard or your outside of your home and install a piece of art. That means you're going to change that area into something different. It's going to be beautiful. The procedure to do this, number one, we need to look at what we have. Sort out your objects so you can see what you have. Decide on a contrasting background. That means decide where you want to put it in your yard. Do you want a grayish tone background? Do you want to put it in your driveway, like on a sidewalk where you have concrete? Or would you like a brown wood background, maybe on your deck? Would you like green tones, maybe on your grass? Or would you like brown tones, 
you might want to find a spot that has some dirt. These are all going to be your background colors that come from nature. Number two, you're going to observe your objects. That means you're really going to think about them. How do they make you feel? Do they bring back a memory? Do you see a certain object in these leaves? I know my little boy created a turtle from his, create, from his pieces that I'll show you in a few minutes. But if you don't see an object in this or a subject matter, then you can just create a design. And a design can have balance and be really beautiful. It could be radial. A radial balanced design would be a design that is balanced in a circle, kind of like a sun. Or you think of a flower having a center and then working its way out. Um, a spiral, maybe you wanna create a spiral design, kind of like a snail or a symmetrical design that's the same on both sides, maybe like a butterfly of matching wings um, and then a center design. But this is something that you can play around with with your objects. When you get your installation installed like you like it, then you would like to set yourself up to take a photo of your art. Photography is an art also. Photography means painting with light and you're going to look at your installation and how you can best photograph it to record it because it's not gonna be able to stay there, guys. By in the morning, it may be gone, may be blown away, and that's okay, but we can document it with our photo. Here's some tips. Take a look at how the shadows affect your installation. Do you have shadows that you like? Or shadows that you don't like? How can you angle your camera so that you get a nice clear picture? Center your art in, center your installation in the viewfinder so that you can really make it the subject of your photo. After you're done with your photo, it's also fun to edit that photo to bring out certain colors that you like or details. And that's something you can play around with um, on your device that you're using to take your camp, your um, your photo. So have fun with this, guys, and I cannot wait to see your art installations.